right, guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an email that was sent from a subscriber. This is my guy. Sounds like he's probably in his late 40s, maybe early 50s. And he shares his story how just recently he came this close from having his family broken up and probably some serious damage done thanks to his mother-in-law and sister-in-law saying a bunch of things that weren't true about his family, him, his wife, all that, just out of pure spite because they haven't liked him forever. And fortunately, because of this guy's sons who are great boys and stood up for their father and obviously handled things right, and he had a couple good cops that were there too with the situation, which you'll see, he got through okay and everything's fine now. And now he is going full scorched earth on his mother-in-law and sister-in-law for coming that close to having his family torn apart. That would be a very good one to go over here, guys, how it's so important to vet your girl's family when you start seeing her and getting serious with her. You got to know what they're like. And I don't mean just going over for dinner one time. You got to really see what they're like. If they seem like a very happy, good family, loving, supportive, she has a great relationship with her mom and dad, especially her dad, okay, there's potential. But if it's drama and turmoil and she can't stand them and all that, it's best to... Part, part ways because that will become your family one day with kids and grandkids and all that. That could be your life, family life with her. Now, of course, if she wants nothing to do with them or she's young, so she's not ready to cut them off yet, but she's not going to be like them, that's debatable. But at the end of the day, you got to know that that is going to impact you and you got to be very, make smart decisions early on. And you're going to see this story here. This mother in law is just huh, terrible. I mean, think, think. Mama Fratelli from the freaking Goonies. That's what I'm picturing here in terms of just vicious and evil and all that. This is what I'm talking about here. And the sister-in-law, I don't know, picture some, some witch, and that's pretty much it. But anyhow, you're going to see how this guy handles it. And let me tell you, this is a good one here. But certainly very important lessons in the story. He says, Dear SSM, I'm sending in this story that I'm presently going through to reinforce the point that you don't just marry your wife. You marry her entire extended family and the horror show that can become. You're darn right about that, sir. That's why I say, guys, you got to really screen her family because that's going to impact you one way or another. And her in terms of what she's going to be like, potentially. I also want to point out that women never outgrow the need for drama with no concern for any consequences. Yep. Of course, women never have to suffer any consequences for their actions, so maybe that's why they never consider them. All women like drama. I don't care anybody freaking says. Now, the cool ones, they can enjoy it by watching shows, like reality shows, or hearing the, the gossip from their girlfriends. And then the other, on the opposite end of the spectrum, they got to be right in the thick of it. And if there's no drama going on, they create it. A brief intro to the family. My wife's parents seemed great when I met them 24 years ago, and her two younger brothers also seemed pretty cool. The highlight of the family was my father-in-law, who was one of the best men I ever met. He and I hit off like long, long-lost friends rather than in-laws. That's great. So you can see already in the beginning, everything seemed okay. Unfortunately, he unexpectedly passed away after his daughter and I had been married for only two years. Now, that man, a retired Navy commander and aviator, was the glue that held the family together. As soon as he passed away, they came apart like Yugoslavian blue jeans. <laughs> Uh, it turned out that growing up, he ruled the house with an iron fist and generally made life miserable for the kids. Well, there's miserable and then there's just ruling to make sure there's no BS, but they're miserable, but not really miserable. As a result, they had built in resentment that didn't have an outlet until he passed away. At that point, they all changed completely. The mother-in-law changed the fastest and the worst. Aha, okay, maybe he did. Maybe there's a reason he had to rule with an iron fist. Think about that one. Clearly, your wife wasn't like the rest of them. My wife and I have talked at length about the difference between the guy I met and the guy she grew up with, and they bore no resemblance. It's been 20 years, and I'm still helping her work through things as they come up. Luckily, my wife was by far the least affected. Okay, so then he was a bit of a tyrant. But maybe he was that way because, who knows, what came first, the chicken or the egg? He was a tyrant first, and they became that way? Or he was that way because, you know, but obviously your wife was not like the rest of them. I can say this with certainty, out of the entire extended family, she, as in my wife, is the only thing of any value, and I married her. Back in 2005, we had been married for four years and moved to where Grandma was living, two states away. 
Our firstborn was two years old at the time, and we wanted him to be as close as possible to at least one of his grandparents. Well, no good deed goes unpunished. Once we moved, I got my real estate broker's license and began showing the mother-in-law properties since she didn't want to live in the house where her husband had passed away. During the three months it took for her to settle on a house, three months, I put 2,000 miles on my truck showing her dozens of properties. You can imagine that since she was now a rudderless boat with no direction, her wants, needs, and desires changed hourly. It sucked. That's when you pretty much say, okay, we're really helping you out here. Here are your options. End of story. One day we were talking about the new batch of houses we were going to look at, and out of nowhere she said, Do you know how many times I wish my daughter had, had married anyone but you? I'd be like, excuse me? Are you effing kidding me? I've been a good husband to your daughter, father to your grandkids. I'm showing you around, put 2,000 miles on my truck for you, and you're telling me this? Well, as a Gen Xer and union electrician, I'm a... I'm a master at verbal sparring and without consci conscious thought, but from, from the heart, I replied, yeah, about half as many times I wish you died instead of your husband. <laughs> yep, don't mess with uh, union guys, with hard working, uh, those types, don't mess with them. Boundaries were marked, shots were fired, and the bridge of that relationship was lit on fire and tossed into a ceiling fan. It steadily got worse as the years rolled on. Fast forward from 2005 to June 2024. Okay, 19 miserable years dealing with the in-laws. My three sons and I were just getting ready to head out and have some fun for the day when there was a heavy pounding on the front door. It was three police officers and an angry effinist from Child Protective Services. What the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? I let them in, big mistake, and asked why they were here. The cops had gotten a call that at least one of my sons was in a dangerous situation. Like I said, all three of my sons were there, 20 years old, 15, and 13. With my, with my permission, they took, they took all three, one by one, into their bedroom and questioned them. The whole process was done in 20 minutes, and they got ready to leave. So meanwhile, you're just enjoying your Saturday or whatever the hell is going on here. And next thing you know, the police and an effinist from Child Protective, you know, is showing up. And you're like, what the? What was the report? Glad you asked. There were three separate accusations. Now listen to this, guys. This is freaking wild. Number one, that I had regular parties where many strange men would come to my house. We'd all get butt naked rub pork on ourselves, and watch spicy material with the boys. Again, what the fuck? I'm going to read that again. Accusation number one. That I had regular parties where many strange men would come into my house, we'd all get butt naked, rub pork on our parts, and watch spicy material. <laughs> well, we all know who this is from. And certainly she had it in for you. Number two. We're not done yet. That I use my youngest son's stuffed animals as a prop to teach them to how to have relations. I gotta watch what I say. Three, that if the boys acted up, I would lock them in dog kennels for hours. Meanwhile, these are great kids and a great family, and you're a great father. He says, Holy hell, what? Needless to say, I was stunned at such an accusation, especially since I pride myself on being the best dad I possibly can be and have been hyper-involved in the boys' lives since day one. As they were wrapping up the interview, the butch from CPS made the comment that she, should have, should, she could have me arrested just to be on the safe side. Yeah, good luck with that. As soon as she said that, two things happened. The cops looked at each other and rolled their eyes, and my boys instantly formed a line in front of me, and my oldest took a deep t step towards her and growled, No, you won't. And my youngest said, You have to arrest us first. Man, I would be so proud of those boys. Good for them. That's going to be a scary thing, standing up there with the police there. You know, this whole thing, what they just went through with the questioning and all that. And I noticed how the police were rolling their eyes when the chick from CPS was giving them a hard time, but I could have you arrested. Clearly, they've heard a lot of BS stories before. The cops can tell it's a bunch of BS. 
I asked who made this accusation, and he said he, he couldn't tell me, but that I get a complete report in a couple weeks that should have all the information. But it was an anonymous report that I would have to sue to get the name since it's my right to face my accuser. Oh, I'd be on the phone with my lawyer as fast as they were out the freaking door. Oh, yeah. Time to go scorched earth. The CPS chick said she knew it was a woman that made the report, but thought also that it was anonymous. They called and, and uh, tormented my wife at work, and of course, her story matched ours simply because none of this BS ever happened, ever. So this wasn't just on the guy here, this was also on his wife, the daughter of his awful mother-in-law and the sister of uh, his awful sister-in-law. Uh, yeah, crazy. In a moment, I didn't fully appreciate what my sons had done for me by standing up like that. Once the shock wore off and the adrenaline drained, I wrapped them in the biggest bear hug possible and praised them to the point of embarrassment. <clears throat> I still wasn't, it still wasn't enough to show how much their ac uh, actions meant to me. I think it was the best thing that has ever happened to me as a man and a father. Your sons are awesome. Good for them. Tell, tell your boys I said that. I, I'm, that is badass. And by the way, he sent some pictures of his sons, and these look like great freaking kids. Now, I'm in finance, and that kind of charge against me could easily cost me my securities licenses. Naturally, that didn't matter to this squawky old crow. The senior cop called me the next day to let me know that they found no evidence to support the charges, and in fact, I made all their day because none of them had ever seen a dad that close with his sons and wife slash mother. That was all in all well. I'll take that as a compliment. Of course, those charges, there was no evidence to support those charges. Uh, he said that the call was anonymous, of course, cowards, but if I wanted to go to court, the court route, to find out exactly who it was, he recommended an attorney and offered to be a material witness, if needed, because he's sick and tired of dealing with these false reports generated by, in his words, these worthless effing W-H-O-R-E-S. Awesome. That's, I like to hear, a cop that's on a guy's side here. He obviously had to do his job, but he's witness volunteering to be a witness in the situation. Sweet. I asked him if it was always women that made these fake reports, and he says, yes, always. Ding, ding, ding. I talked to the attorney to get the ball rolling. It'll be two separate court dates. One to face the accusers. We've already figured out it was my mother-in-law and one of my sister-in-laws, and then one to sue them. The suit will be for defamation of character and slander. The DA will add on the charges for filing a, a false police report and a lower degree of child, child endangerment due to the potential extreme disruption of my family. Bring it on. Go scorched earth. No mercy. 100%. This is how we figured out who it was and where one of the charges came from. Now listen to this. On Mother's Day, so that wasn't too long ago, that was, uh, when the hell was that? Mid-May, I think. We were getting ready for church. Well, that morning, the youngest woke up and chose violence, so he and I were smack-talking each other as only a father and son can. You know, yeah, many of us know what that's like. It's finally my turn to get in the shower, where I was moving quick because I knew from painful experience that dads only get about a minute of hot water. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Well, the future adoptee... <laughs> <laughs> stuck into the bathroom and dumped approximately 25.48 gallons of cold water on me. Naturally, revenge would be swift and savage. I got out, dried off, and emerged from the bathroom looking for targets. I spotted his favorite stuffed animal, snatched it up, and teabagged it, a la Fortnite, and then threw it at him. He grabbed it, ran to the kitchen, and ratted me out to my wife, who was busy making strawberry muffins for breakfast. What a unicorn. Oh my god. Bro was yelling that I contaminated, his word, the stuffed animal, and that he needed a new one right now. Mom told him to calm down, hit it with a shot of Febreze, and give it back. And that was the end of that. Except I was putting on my suit for church, and he ninja kicked me behind me, kicking, kicking me in the ankle. Punk, payback is going to suck for him. Kicked you in the ankle, that could cause some serious damage. I'm assuming he tapped your ankle. Okay, these are guys, guys. They're rowdy and all that, you know. At lunch that day with the mother-in-law, he related this, that story thinking it was funny it would make grandma laugh. Wrong. That old bee stewed on that story for a couple weeks, morphed it into that insane story, and talked about it with the sister-in-law, and together they hatched the plan to get me. You know, if they had an issue with that, you think they'd go to his wife, the mother of the kids, their relation? No. They would just been waiting around for a chance to get this guy. 
who obviously is a great father. And you all remember the accusations. I don't need to repeat them. I worry about my sister-in-law. She is the picture-perfect example of a millennial, narcissistic, psycho boss babe and even has the lumpy, squatty appearance to match. She is pure hate and evil and ruins everybody's life any chance she gets. The only thing missing is pink hair. Does she have tattoos on her arms? Did I mention we've hated each other since the day we met? For my part, it's because I despise women like her, and for her, she hates me because I call her an all, her BS, which she distributes by the metric ton. Good for you for not taking her crap. Yeah, unfortunately, we've known many types like this. And I'm willing to bet you that she has zero people in her life that actually give a crap about her because she's hell on wheels. She's misery on wheels. Well, she is very high up in the administration of a medical school and as such is a reporting person at HAS to report any kind of abuse if she hears of it. Ah, uh, one of these types on a power trip. How convenient. So was mother-in-law venting her feverish imagination to sister-in-law who saw a grand chance to screw me with it and ran with it. Now she's screwed. Once she gets sued for this, bye-bye her job, amongst many other things. And filing a false police report's no joke. We're talking some uh, potentially some prison time. I sure hope. I need to mention that the day after the cops showed up, when we realized that the only person other than us on the planet that knew about the stuffed animal thing was the mother-in-law, it had to come from her so my lovely, loyal, beautiful wife ambushed her mom at home laid out the case, which was firmly denied, of course, and told her that not only my mother-in-law no longer part of her family, or our family, that, our, our, that we are no longer part of mother-in-law's family, extending out to the fourth, four cousins three times removed. Good for your wife. That's, see guys, I say all the time, you dating relationship ties, when you're getting to know a girl and she seems like she's pretty cool, you meet her family. If her family's a bunch of wackos, obviously head for the hills. Now, that could be unfair to her if she really is a great person and doesn't want to be like her family, but a lot of times are, she's going to be like them one way or another under the influence of them, and they're going to bring turmoil to your life. Unless your girl is ready to write off her family if they push them too far, that's a problem. And clearly here, his wife here is done with them. Frankly, she should have been done with them a long time ago, but obviously nothing this extreme has happened since. He says, I married a good one. You did, sir. She'd grown, up, she'd grown as tired as me of her mom taking shots at me all the time, and since this attack could have destroyed my career, our family even caused her to lose her boys, Mama Bear took over, and Granny got both barrels. Did I mention my wife is a redhead of German descent? Hell yeah, get some, babe. Oh boy, fiery redhead at 3 o'clock. Finally, as this progresses through the courts, I intend to try to get as much money as possible out of the old bag, not because I want or need it, but to severely limit her other kids slash grandkids inheritance. F them. They all deserve it. After what she did to you and your wife and your kids, the mess that could have caused that went the wrong way, absolutely scorched earth. The lawyer says that her, uh, his angle for massive damages is that if her actions had caused the loss of my career, which is a very real possibility, it would have cost us a couple million dollars of lost income based on my annual income and how many years I have till typical retirement. I'm grinning just typing this. Bro, please write, write me down the road. Let me know what happens here. As for the sister-in-law, her position, which pays very well and is prestigiously local, prestigious locally, is shaky and has been for years. I firmly believe that she has stayed in her job simply because crazy always wins, and trust me, she's effing crazy. I won't have bet you her employers have wanted to get rid of her for years. And when this thing goes through, now they're going to have their opportunity. They're going to be doing cartwheels. Well, as soon as she gets convicted of filing a false report and child endangerment, the board of that medical entity will be getting the full transcript of court and asked if they really want someone like this running the show. Yeah, I would be sending, if you can, I talked to your lawyer about seeing if you can, you know, have uh, some of this info go to the local media about her or, or something about, you know, this, this, this employee of this top medical university involved in this such a thing? Do they want someone like that? You get the point. Talk to your lawyer about that. They won't want that bad, uh, they wouldn't want the heat. My guess is probably not. At least she'll be able to tell people that once upon a time she lived in a gated community. Checkmate, bitch. 
That is it. I just, want, I just want to make sure that your uh, Blue Pill listeners understand that women in general are not creatures of beauty and light. They are all primarily evil and look for opportunities to wreak havoc. Well, not... Here's the thing. Do you really mean that about your own wife, who you said seems to be a pretty darn good wife to you, your boys and all that? So, not everyone, but I will say that certainly they certainly have the capability to do so, push their wrong. But hopefully, in this, what you're describing here, that your wife can lead that in the direction towards her mother and her sister. But not all women are like the, the, like the mother-in-law and sister-in-law, but there are a lot of wackos out there that do a lot of things, and we're not going to deny that. But there are some decent ones out there. I know a lot of people disagree with me on that, but, but there is always the ability to, you know... And, of course, a bigger warning to the relationship bros that seriously vetting your girl's family is not just important, it is imperative. Uh, spending a few days with them a couple times a year will not do it. You have to get to know them almost as well as the girl herself. A rotten extended family is a good reason to walk away. I wholeheartedly agree. However, in your case, it's a... I'll get to that in a minute. Finally, I've included two pictures of my boys. The oldest has just aged out from the cadet, cadet side of the Civil Air Patrol, where he attained the second highest rank of a cadet slash lieutenant colonel. The other is the brethren, the two younger two, who were able to play on the same little league team last year. It is my opinion that an evil dad, capable of doing the things I was accused of, could not create sons like this, but maybe I'm wrong. Keep up God's work, SSM. You're doing great. Well, sir, you're doing great. You're doing God's work raising good boys. We need more good boys to grow into strong men and leaders in this world, and that's what you did. So you and your wife did a great job. Now, back to the whole thing. i got to reinforce this, because i got a lot of guys or relationship guys, that, whether they want to admit it or not, there's plenty of you out there, and you, you know it. Don't fucking fool me. Yeah, you got to pay attention to her family. You can be dating a great gal. She seems cool. She seems fun, seemingly. But then you meet her family, and they're, they're freaking a bunch of psychos, and there's drama and turmoil. that would tell you something, because likely that's how, she's, that's how she grew up, and that's how your family life's going to be with her. Now, there are exceptions where a gal grows up with a bunch of wackos, and she does not want to be like them, but she's still young, and she's not ready to cut them off just yet. So, and that sounds like your wife. Your wife, obviously, is a good woman, good wife, good mother. But now, enough's enough. She should have cut them off a long time ago, because look what happened. Thank God it worked out in your favor. But now she's done. And so, guys, if you're going to get involved with a gal and her family's a bunch of nut jobs, you need to know that what you could be dealing with, as he pointed out. And unless you know absolutely your wife would be willing to walk away if it goes too far from them and cut them out completely... And that you and your children are number one in her life, not her wacko family. Then it's best to head into the sunset and find another chick. Because you want a gal that has a family with a there's a lot of love there. She's got a good relationship with not just her mom but her dad. No, we don't need daddy issues. That they're loving and supportive, good communication. That's what you want. Because otherwise, you know, look what can happen. So there you go. So, bro, please do keep me updated on this. I guarantee a lot of guys listening to this story are going to want to hear what happens to these a-holes, and they deserve it. I, I really hope they get, get do some time. You know, but I'm willing to bet you probably the mother-in-law will probably play dumb. I'm old, and don't, she doesn't know what she's talking about, that type of thing. But your sister-in-law, she's she's toast. I want to hear hear what happens. So let me down, know down the road with an update. And, guys, you're watching this. You want to hear an update to this story? I'm sure you do. Let him know in the comment section, because if you do, I guarantee you he'll send an update just as soon as there's something to tell. And if you like the video, share with your friends and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.